right? So when we're talking about health, you don't have to spend a dollar on only health to improve the health of the community. And as we just saw, social assets are becoming more and more important. If we're really moving to a feeling economy, then social assets, my feeling of belonging in a community, my ability to make friends in a community, my ability to have a support system of other people in a community, right? Those social assets are what are going to be important to me. Does my child's school care if my child learns to read? Does my, child, does my community care if I can access daycare for my child so that I can do right? Those kinds of relationships, those kinds of social assets are going to really move communities forward as we move to a feeling. And so what are we doing to build the social infrastructure of our community? not just the physical, not just the financial. So this is where I want to talk about what you can do. You can be kind. Until you get enough doctors, until we get the physical, financial, and social infrastructure, that improves health. The thing you can start doing today is being kind. We did a four year study at ACOM of empathy in our medical students. You can find it on our website, probably not about the Hispanic medicine and empathy. Right? What we found was as students moved through school, their empathy declines. Why? Because they feel the friction of the healthcare system. So our schools have started implementing programs to build up that empathy. And compassion is empathy in action. It is you doing something in response to the empathy that you feel for another person. Right? That's what compassion is. Receiving compassionate care, receiving care provided through the lens of empathy from a physician improves the patient's health outcomes. Measure. It improves the patient's health outcomes. Measure. It lowers blood pressure. It improves anxiety. It shortens the amount of time you need to stay in the hospital after a procedure or after a medical crisis. These are all measurable outcomes that your patients experience positively or your relatives experience positively, or your community members experience positively. But as we were and other researchers were exploring the outcomes of empathy and compassion in patients, we also saw changes in the medical students, changes in the physicians that improved their health as well. It reduced burnout. Acting, developing your empathy and then acting on it through being compassionate, through being kind, through being caring, reduced physicians' burnout, gave them better job satisfaction, and renewed their purpose. What did we say we need to fix the burnout, the psychological symptoms among our medical students and physicians, this 
fix those problems. The physician being rejuvenated through a lens of empathy to provide compassionate care fixed the burnout problems, fixed the psychological symptoms. That's what we can do to keep our, our physicians in practice in our communities. We can work with them to redevelop, to find again their empathy and their compassion. But it also works with you. If you are kind, if you act towards others with compassion, you, you will live longer. You will live healthier. You will live better. And so will the person to whom you are being kind, or the community where you are being kind. Right? So if you have high blood pressure, how do you fix high blood pressure? Right? Exercise. Come on, man. That's everybody, everybody hears that all the time. If you have high blood pressure, diet and exercise. If you have high blood pressure, you will get a better result from being compassionate. Doesn't that sound crazy? I agree. But the evidence is the evidence. Science is the science. Lower blood pressure, reduced chronic pain, longer life. That will happen to you as you act kindly more often, as you act with compassion more often. It also increases, improves your sense of purpose. When I was talking with the IGI students today, I said what we discovered as the secret to burnout in our medical students, three things. Growth mindset. The ability to make mistakes, recover from them, and improve. Right? Growth mindset. G. Purpose and relevance of what they're learning. And understanding of how, what they're learning in biochemistry, and how that's going to help them take care of patients. So G, growth mindset, P, person relevance, sense of belonging, a feeling like they belong in medical school, they belong in this community. There are people who want them to be there, who believe they can do it. Sense of belonging, GPS, like the navigational guidance system. Right? That's what leads them to better mental health, to decrease burnout. So not only is it good for your friends, for your neighborhood, for your community, right, by enhancing social cohesion, increasing civic engagement, having reduced crime, economic benefits, but it's better for you than many men. So you are the perfect audience. You all on this side of the room are young future entrepreneurs and leaders. On this side of the room, man, I was so impressed by some of the projects that are going on. You are leaders who are finding yourselves. This is for you. You have the ability, starting now, to exercise passionate leadership and improve your health and the health of your friends, your family, your community. What are the personal characteristics of, of compassionate leadership? They're not surprising. You can see them right there. Right? Active listening, expressing gratitude, showing empathy, modeling compassion. What are the benefits of compassionate leadership? 
the benefits of having and selecting a compassionate leader, improved mental health, stronger relationships, a more resilient community. What does resilient mean? Able to weather adversity and combat. Isn't that what we wish for our community? And for the individual members of our community, better emotional and physical health for all members of our community as we wait for those additional physicians to arrive, as we wait for those healthier physicians to return to practice, right? as we wait for our communities to improve the financial, the physical, the social infrastructures in the meantime, in that gap, we can be finding, uh, compassionate leaders and we can produce these outcomes in our communities, in our families, in our friends, in ourselves. Those who practice kindness see benefits such as increased happiness, lower stress levels, and a greater sense of connection and purpose. And that is what I wish for you. That is what I've seen for you, from you. That is the hope I have for our future. Right? So, start with self-compassion. Be kind to yourself. Move to your families and friends. And then, take it to your communities. Right? You can influence and promote a culture of compassion among your family, your friends, your communities, once you are kind to yourself. You can engage in initiatives that meet local needs. You can prioritize compassion in decision making. You can make your community better and a healthier 